uh, good morning, I should say. So, say that again. <laughs> uh, I was just saying good morning and thank you uh, for your time. Oh, no, thank you. How, how early is it where you are? Uh, it is five minutes past two in the a.m. Oh, so God. <laughs> I'm coming at you from the future. Uh, it's, <laughs> now, it's now Wednesday. I love a bit of time travel. Uh, speaking yeah, of sci-fi, yeah. I, I approve of the, the poster over your shoulder. Thank you very much, <laughs> mate. Yeah, thanks all. Classic, classic. Uh, it, yeah, it is a classic. Um, I think your poster is actually pretty good for your movie as well. Did Did you have a say in how the artwork went about? Um, yeah, um, a little bit. I mean, I had a poster designed um, during post production, uh, which isn't that one, but um, but it kind of it kind of started the, set the tone. But it was really cool. Uh, uh, Priscilla, our sales agent, has a an artist that she works with who also does um, the screen movies. Yeah. So that, so that the image of the, the the knife coming out the the river of blood um, was was pretty cool and pretty much on brand. I kind of looked at that. Uh -huh. uh, I recognise this. <laughs> we're, in, we're in good company. Uh, but no, that, that's the cool thing about it is when other people start coming to the process uh, that have a new take on it because you spend so much time around oh, it yeah. and having it and you're so hypercritical. I mean, I think um, opening night in the cinema in September, I, I had to go to two showings of it back to back and I was yeah. kind of like, and I knew I had another four to go to over that week for I had to go and do talks and whatnot, and I was just like, "I'm done. <laughs> I need a break." <laughs> it was like everyone's experiencing it for the first time, but I'm I'm going through my my hundredth viewing of it. Um, but no, it's yeah. great. But I, but when other people come to the party and they kind of they bring their take on it um, artistically, it is always quite thrilling to see what people how they perceive it and how they think how the artwork should look. So uh, it's a great part of the process, I, I, and. Um, and it's good to see when it's on when it's very much on brand. And they've understood the movie and they understand what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, so it's it's a it's, it's a great part of the process. Yeah, no, I think your poster and the thumbnail is really important, especially now because there's so many to choose from as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, on online in particular. Uh, what about the title? Was it always going to be called Mercy Falls? I know that you, you co-wrote it as well. Yeah, I think I, I think briefly, uh, because my my writing partner is American, um, so we sometimes battle with uh, the language barrier uh, between, right. <laughs> between uh, British English and American English, um, and it's usually around things about gun control. But <laughs> but um, okay, yeah, I think briefly, I think for about a week, it was called Mercy Creek, um, and until uh. so it was like the conversation happened of. Okay, we don't really have them here. We have, you know, in Scotland we call them a burn. So it's like yeah. we should probably just let's. I, I see where we're going with it, but let's uh, let's let's take that out of the equation. Um, and it really, but and then as you're experimenting with the themes of, um, you know, kind of falling into this sort of the primor, primal kind of uh, mentality and um, the, right. the the burning of the body and the waterfall and all that, you know, and it very much all became about the fall. Um, mm. So it very, um, so it very quickly it became Mercy Falls, and, and then you start thinking, why the hell did you think about anything else? That's just yeah. idiotic. <laughs> but you know, we got there in the end, went to the trees and all that. Uh, is there a director cameo in the movie? Did I miss you somewhere? I've, yeah, I am there. I'm in there uh, vocally. I didn't walk up. I walked past the camera on this one. Uh, right. I, I am the mountain rescue team radioing in. I'm the guy. Hello, Mercy Falls. We're coming. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, that that was that was me with a lot of filters thrown onto the skies because the last thing you want is to go to the go to screens where there's people that know you in the room and everyone's really tense and quite scared and then you hear that and then people that know you just start laughing because they recognize the voice but that didn't happen right. no one clocked nobody clocked it um and i think in my last film i'm like this the, above here you can yeah. see me uh, on in the at the back of a bus <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I mean, this is a little bit different than directing a Christmas movie, obviously. So um, what were the challenges? Uh, the elements 
of some of the areas where you were filming must have been interesting uh, because, you know, I mean, it's nature. So did any anything happen that made it more of a challenge or was the weather perfect oh, all the time? I think despite genre, that is just a sort of occupational hazard for me. Uh, I'm sure. always filming in the outdoors and I try to avoid filming in the summer so we don't get attacked by the midges because the crew hate you enough as it is. So <laughs> we go for cold rather than warm and eating alive. Um, and I mean, on, on this one, funnily enough, on the last film, we, ch we were chasing snow and having a hard right. time getting it. Uh, and on Mercy Falls, which doesn't have any snow in it at all, we're filming no. the scene where Lauren is standing watching the sunset. Uh, and we're doing that for real. So we're doing that in the magic hour as the sun is setting behind the mountain um, on the opposite side of the lock that we're standing above uh, on this yeah. big hill um, across the water. And it's a huge, big open valley. And we're we're setting up to do the close-up um, of this shot. And she's all beautifully lit with the sun. It's all gold and it's lovely. And over our shoulder is this ball further down the lock. It looks like the ball from the prisoner. Oh, so right. rolling up the other side of the lock and we're thinking, what the hell is that? And it was like, and it took about, those of us that worked on the last one went, bloody snow is what that is. It's snow. And it's like, yeah, it's going to miss us. It's going up the other side of the lock. It's pretty straight. It gets to that, it gets opposite the opposite side from us directly and switches direction just comes right at us. Oh, so, <laughs> literally mid take of this gorgeous big close up of Lauren and the, the sunset, uh, and the snow starts coming. It's a, a blizzard starts coming through the shot, which we then had to painstakingly paint out um, afterwards. But uh, yeah, the weather always throws um, unpredictable challenges at you. Um, I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's sunny or if it's pouring with rain all day, as long as it stays the same. Because sure. then, because in Scotland we have this terrible thing of uh, the weather change can change on you every twenty minutes. So, yeah, okay. Some, that doesn't help when you're trying to match continuity throughout a, a long sequence of a day. Well, does that change you as a director? Does like if you see uh, the weather changing, or do you all of a sudden have to change scenes, or do you just keep on going, uh, no matter what? Yeah, you kind of have to. You're kind of on your toes the whole time, and you you have to be ready to react. When you yeah, make an independent film, yeah. uh, I find that you have to be kind of ready to change your approach or change a scene at a moment's notice uh, okay. because something will happen. I mean, there was one scene that was supposed to happen. Um, it is in the film, but it's not as intended. It was meant to be shot a certain way with a particular vibe and a sort of uh, as a POV and one single shot with the camera moving all the time. And literally because it rained all day and it, interrupt, it made the earlier scenes take longer, we yeah. weren't able to switch over to that rig to shoot. So you, then you have to think about completely changing how you shoot a scene. So yeah. it ends up being a bit more what my DP would call traditional um, as opposed to being the slightly more sort of the arty, the, the sort of the more artistic kind of approach we had in mind. But again, that's, that's part of the thing you have to, you have to compromise and make sure you get through the day, but make sure the, the bar, you don't drop in yeah. the, the bar in quality. You just have to make sure that you, sometimes you have to compromise and you try not to let it drop below a certain level. But that's uh, that's, the, that's the, the risk. <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean like uh, Scottish filmmakers uh, are tougher than the rest of the world? <laughs> no, um. I don't think it's so much Scottish uh, that it makes it harder. I think it's just um, when you're doing something with a minimal budget, with minimal time, that is, yeah. is the one thing you don't have is time. So, uh, And I think that's probably the same for everyone making an independent film, uh, no matter what part of the world you're in. I think you're always up against um, um, the realities of, of, of life in a day and you know, the, oh, yeah. the time you have in a day. Um, you're always. I think every. I think we all. I think anyone who makes an independent film um, has to battle with the same um, trials that, uh, that we have to. Yeah, I'm an advocate for indie film. I really love getting the word out there, and a movie like yours is physical as well. It wouldn't have been that easy. So, was there any injuries <laughs> on set? Um, I don't believe so. I think uh, I seem to remember this sort of recurring theme of I, I would trip over on any given day and I'm usually quite right. 
I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm quite pretty outdoorsy, clumsy but... myself. <laughs> but for some reason, put me on a film set and I'm clumsy and I'm falling over everything. I mean, it, it literally became a running joke. Oh, there he goes again. Um, but uh, no, uh, luckily, everybody kind of uh, a couple of scratches here and there during fight scenes, but nobody get clobbered. Yeah. Um, usually, whenever I think that's when I used to be an actor, that always seemed to happen. Whenever I was in the fight scene, there'd always be a point where I'd get smacked one was like <laughs> was that an error or was that was that to teach me a lesson uh but <laughs> but no no it was a uh, challenging um but yeah no broken bones good good to hear uh what about distractions was there a pub nearby did any of the cast sort of dis- disappear for a while <laughs> you know it's an indie movie anything can happen right oh yeah um no, I mean, it, quite quite often you, it didn't happen on this one, but quite often you'll be filming a sort of uh, a, an insane murder scene or something in the middle of the woods and then suddenly one man and his dog walks by in the background. Right. <laughs> and everyone's like, how you doing? Uh, let's go again. Uh, but uh, no, you, uh, that was, uh, we were quite, because um, uh, it, well, although it was very indie, we did try to be um, on private land quite, more often than not, right. so that it yeah, helps okay. with it helps with that uh, and control not having to um, sort of you know police the public, um, which is uh, which is always something that drains into your time. Uh, you know, sure. I think we we had to shoot in a country park on one particular day, um, and it moved around the schedules a bit, and I never thought much of it, and then it landed on a Saturday, and then we got there, uh, and there's a there's a yeah. pl- adventure playground about half a mile over that way somewhere. Oh no. And, and the sound, you could just see the sound guy going, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, li- little bits like that. But um, no, we were, pr- we were, I don't think, no, I don't, th- I don't think uh, we had a pub that anyone could really run off to, uh, fortunately or unfortunately. <laughs> uh, it doesn't get much better than Lauren and Nicolette, like that dream casting. Did you have them in mind to begin with? I mean, both really impressive and I've got to say mm. well done. To you or the casting agents, who um, who recommended them, or had you worked with them before? Uh, well, Nicola was in had a very small part in Lost at Christmas, um, so it kind of just came from that, and she's very physical, right. and um, and that. So yeah, I, she was in my head when I was writing that character, um, and uh, Lauren was just uh, was suggested um, because we wrote this script for a bunch of characters in their 20s and what tends to happen I find is that when you grow up with actors and creators around you you tend to kind of know yeah, okay. your age and and older you don't tend to know the ones younger that well um so kind of we kind of looked around and thought oh, oh actually I don't know anyone that they can play these parts we're gonna have to do a traditional casting you know nepotism out the window um so we hired a casting director and we literally put a shout out to all the agents uh, in the UK and uh, for that part and said, right, well, we're looking for someone who can, you know, tackle, you know, head on the kind of the challenging role this is because she has sure, quite yeah. the journey to, to take, but we also want someone who is recognisable. Um, so, and you, you, ba- you basically throw that out and you see what comes back. Uh, and okay. I got a list, I got a list of about a dozen names and I cannot remember for the life of me uh, who they were. They were all pretty well known, um, but Lauren just sort of looked, came right out of the page at me. I'd seen her in something a few months earlier, and it, well, I didn't think, "Oh, who's that?" But I took note at the time, thinking, "Oh, that's an interesting performance. Who's that?" Um, yeah, right. And then just that was in the back of my mind, and then completely unrelated, this list of actors gets put in front of me, and uh, there was that face. I went, "Aha." <laughs> uh, yeah, and it just made sense. It just it just made sense and more to go. Um, yeah, we we were very very fortunate. Um, everybody uh, everybody was incredibly well cast and um, really brought their A game to the whole thing. And it was it was it was a nice ensemble um, sort of company. Uh, and I like to encourage that kind of sense of collaboration. Um, yeah, so it, uh, you can I don't tell. Like, yeah, well, thank you. Uh, and I thought, what's that? Who, who wants to be the director that has to t- walk into the set and go, right, 
this is how I want you to act. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I kind of, you know, you try and spend as much time, although we didn't get time to rehearse, um, you try and spend as much time as you can with everyone to just to talk through ideas and talk about the tone of it and what you're what you're wanting from it. And I try to get mm-hmm. a lot of that in, on the page so everyone can understand what you want from something or what you want from a character or a scene. Um, so, and if you cast it correctly, I kind of uh, I advocate for the kind of the Ridley Scott approach of cast the best and most intelligent actors you can find and let them bring it. Uh, yeah. And then all you have to do is adjust, you know, and tell them where to hit the marks, etc. But, uh, you know, it's, it's that kind of thing where let them bring it and then you tweak, you give, you direct, you don't tell. Um, mm. and, and because, you, again, it comes back to the time. You don't have the time to, and sometimes you, you, you do have the time, you can do it, but you don't have the time to sit down and go through all the beats and all the the, 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 okay. the processes of um of pulling it together. So you, you kind of have to rely on them to do that, a lot of that themselves, really. Um, which, and fortunately, that's exactly what they did, and they made my life a lot easier <laughs> than it could have been otherwise. Well, I'll please make sure whatever your next projects, uh, you make sure that Nicolette and Lauren are there somewhere, both in really intelligent and striking actors. So well done again. Um, you. you said you're a collaborative director and you said tweaks. Did you have to change anything along the way? Were, was there another ending you had in mind or any scenes that you couldn't really do to sort of get around or did everything from paper end up on the screen? Um, not everything ended up on screen. Um, I think the opening changed. The original opening was the flashback uh, okay. to Afga- the Afghanistan opening. That was supposed to open with that big, huge shot going over the Afghan mountains with a helicopter, and um, sure. And it kind of just it, it kind of took it zapped all the mystery. I mean, my sales agent was like, "You've got to have an action opening. You've got to have some kind of high paced opening." And we went for that, and then it was like, "We're kind of giving the game away." Uh, so let's uh, let's, <laughs> let's let's move that. And luckily, uh, what had happened? We'd, we'd had there's a couple of scenes that didn't make the cut that we. That, that we cut out entirely uh, but it gave us some footage of of Lauren waking up from a nightmare okay. so it was like aha so that, the, the opening was very much made in the edit but that's kind of the, that's the fun you kind of you go and you see what you've got and something yeah, works yeah, yeah, I understand. but uh, that's probably the biggest change um, for, I think there yeah, that and the way one of the characters toward the end uh, died uh, there was a little, uh, I won't say who, uh, but there's a there's a there's a particular death scene um, near the end, um, right? And it happened as scripted, but there was there was an extra little layer of, okay. of perform, performance that was uh, that was put in there um, on the day, and that was that was again that's the a good example of collaboration between um, uh, myself and the two actors in the scene of just. We all understand why we're here. We know we understand the tone and the yeah. sort of primal uh, morality tale is really starting to take hold. So more <laughs> ideas come to the table. And that's the great thing about it. It's like, what if we did this? Oh, but then what if we did that? Uh, and suddenly magic happens uh, and you end up with something, uh, you end up with a scene that is a lot more powerful um, than perhaps it was on the page. It all falls together. That's good to hear. Absolutely. Uh, to wrap it up, uh, in your own words, I always like to ask directors, filmmakers, in their own words, give me a reason to watch your movie. That's there's a lot to choose from out there, and I know I've seen it. It's brilliant. It's you've done a lot with what you had, uh, and the acting and the music and the editing is all great. So the soundtrack's terrific. But in your own words, why should people choose Thank you. Mercy Falls? Uh, well. Mercy Falls is just a, a good romp. It's a it's a fast moving uh, and adrenaline horror film in the woods. It looks stunning. It sounds great. The performances are, are incredible, and it does it goes a little bit further uh, than your your average slasher. It, it delves a little more a little bit more into the psychology of what's going mm. on. So um, for 
everything you expect and want from a slash in the woods and a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I concur. Uh, do you have a director's chair with your name on it? Um, I kind of do. Um, I, I, I didn't buy it. Uh, my friend <laughs> Colin bought it for my 30th quite a while ago. Uh, so it says Ryan at 30 on the back of it. Um, and it, oh, it, ha- it comes to set, but I, I think I'm the least, I, I get the least amount of time in it. Someone else gets to use it uh, because I can't yeah. sit still. I'm running around, I'm up about, oh, I want to check that out. Uh, I, oh, I, I try, although when you're when, during a take, I'm very much on the monitor watching what's going on. But okay. in yeah, between that, you're all over the place. So uh, there's a, is a, there, there's, there is a director chair on name on it, but it kind of gathers dust. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thanks, Ryan. Um, I hope to see you down under sometime. You know, have you ever been to Australia? No, I've not, and I keep meaning to. Uh, I'm dying to. You guys have got it figured out in terms of uh, filmmaking. Um, yeah, there's a and, lot of projects happening. Yeah, yeah, it, it keeps. Uh, I keep hearing about it. There's all. There's always talk of things going to various studios in Australia, uh, and it just seems to be kind of there's a movement heading that way. So. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully you get to come and do something in the outdoors that's a bit warmer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. Uh, warmer and more dangerous. A lot more uh, animals down here that can hurt you. Oh, this, it just sounds like it's just waiting for me to turn up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thanks, Ryan. Nice to meet you, mate. And um, Likewise. take it easy. I'll look forward to your next projects, even if it is another Christmas movie. <laughs> never say never <laughs> <laughs> All right. thanks Polly thank you so see much Shane I'll send this afterwards I appreciate, appreciate all the best you.